Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video. And I want to welcome you to another episode. In this episode, we are going to spend our time talking about six fantastic blog posts that have been sent in to Go Collect. And as a reminder, we're going to talk about six, but rest assured that there are plenty of other fantastic blog posts that are available to you on the gocollect.com website. I really dig this first blog post and I like it because the blogger doesn't talk about buying. Instead, they talk about when to sell comics. And if you are an investor or speculator, knowing when to sell is vitally important. And the blogger actually takes some time in this post to highlight three characters and books that you may want to consider selling if you actually have them in your collection. The very first character that the blogger talks about is Punchline. And for his part, the blogger basically says, now is the time to actually offload these comics. In the post, the blogger states that DC Comics is in a state of turmoil. If you're investing in characters 10 years or older, you may be safe, but if you're investing in new characters from a comic book company in a state of chaos, you may want to reconsider your choices. And the blogger goes on to basically say that if you are sitting on copies of Hell Risen issue number three, that now, right now, is the time to sell those books. Next up, the blogger talks about the first appearance of Cable in New Mutants issue number 87. The blogger actually highlights that this was a book that they always wanted to pick up, but never did so because there was always another book or two that actually had more potential than New Mutants 87. And again, this is a book that the blogger is basically saying, you may want to sell because the time is right. If you have any interest in the Black Panther and Shuri, I would encourage you to check out this blog post because in it, the blogger actually makes a really strong argument for why investing in Shuri may not be a smart move. The link to this blog post, along with all the others that I'll be talking about in this episode are down in the description. This next blog post is near and dear to my heart because it is focused on my favorite character, Spider-Man. And the blogger does a really solid job of highlighting three books from the 60s that you may want to check out if you believe that investing in Spider-Man is a good move. The very first book that the blogger highlights is the first appearance of Norman Osborn in Amazing Spider-Man issue number 37. The blogger highlights that you may want to consider picking up a 5.0 copy of this book because according to the Go Collect sales data, there has actually been a steady increase in the value of these mid-grade comics. Next up, the blogger talks about another first appearance, that being of Mary Jane Watson in Amazing Spider-Man issue number 25. Now, this book is a book that across all grades have actually been increasing in value. So it doesn't really matter where you want to place your bets. You potentially can't go wrong by picking up this book. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the third book is because I want you to read the blog post when you have an opportunity. And I also want you to stay tuned because the blogger is going to be talking about the 70s next. And I have a feeling that we have a few more blog posts as we continue to work through the decades. So this may be one that you want to check out on an ongoing basis. So I'm gonna be honest, I am struggling with this next blog post just a little bit, but I am going to be looking forward to reading you all's comments 
down in the comment section after you hear what I have to say and after you read this blog post for yourself. Now, why am I struggling? I'm struggling because of the hypothesis that is actually being presented in this blog post. The blogger is making an argument that DC Comics is in trouble and that DC Comics may go down the path of licensing all of its characters to Jim Lee and that Jim Lee is going to start a new company basically producing comics that have been licensed from DC and that this is potentially how our DC characters will continue to live on. I struggle with this for several reasons. Jim Lee has never really struck me as being an entrepreneur. Yes, he was one of the founding members of Image Comics, but he wasn't there all that long. And if you read some of the, the, the articles that have been written about him, and if you listen to some of his own comments, he professed to have always wanted to return to Marvel and DC. And at this point in his career, I think that he's actually been with a large company much longer than he was ever with an independent company. So the idea that Jim is going to strike out and find his entrepreneurial spirit and launch a comic book company at his age, at his point in his career, I don't necessarily see that happening. So with that said, I also believe that DC is putting itself in a position to be able to survive long term. At least that is my hope. They've been letting go of a lot of people. And I, for one, don't necessarily believe all of the rumors out there that DC is no longer going to be printing comics come the summer. I just don't believe that. I believe that they are cleaning house. I believe that they are positioning themselves for the future and that they will be here long term. Because you have to remember that comics in and of themselves are a billion dollar market and DC has a healthy percentage of that billion dollar market. They also have ample licensing with Superman and also Batman. Take a look at this blog post. It's linked down in the description. Organize your thoughts, noodle it just a little bit, and then leave a comment behind so that we can have a little bit of discussion amongst ourselves. So over the last few weeks, we've been talking pretty consistently about Star Wars related spec. And the reason for that is because the Mandalorian is really good. And because the Mandalorian is good, people are speculating on all types of Star Wars related comics. This week, our blogger actually takes a look at three different characters that you may want to check out. I'm only going to talk about two of these characters, but there are three and the link is down in the description if you are curious as to who the third character actually is. The very first character that the blogger talks about is Asajj Ventress, who actually died in the Clone Wars. But fret not, this is the Star Wars universe and comics, and so this character could potentially come back. In comics, Asajj made her debut in 2003, specifically in the Jedi Mace Windu issue number one. And at a 9.8, this book is pretty pricey. It has a 90-day average of $522. The blogger points out that a 9.6 might actually be a safer and better bet. In September, this book was selling for around $220. The next character that we'll talk about is Finn Scheisse, and this character had his first appearance in Star Wars issue number 68. And what's really cool about this book is not only was it the first appearance, but it was also the first reference to the planet known as Mandalore and the Mandalorians. And I think that this is really cool because I've actually gotten into the Mandalorian series, so I get a kick out of this one. But let's take a look at the data associated with this book. This comic has been performing incredibly well. In fact, 
This book is nearing a three month fair market value at a 9.8 at just about $900. The last thing that I'll say on this blog post is that we don't really know which way the wind is going to blow on Star Wars. If The Mandalorian's popularity continues, if there is another TV show in the works that is going to be coming out for Disney+, Plus, these are all things that bode well for the future of the comics that are associated with Star Wars. If this doesn't necessarily play out that way, then you could see a little bit of a downturn. So, do your research, think about it before you pull the trigger. The Merc with a mouth is back, but will he have a potty mouth? I think that that is still one of the unanswered questions. So if you haven't heard, it was recently announced that Deadpool 3 is going to be made. While we don't know what's going to happen with the rating, we do know that there are some pretty awesome comics out there that are associated with Deadpool that people may want to think about picking up. And in this blog post, our blogger does a really good job of highlighting several books that are associated with Deadpool that have some potential. I'm only going to touch on a couple of them, so you definitely want to check out this blog post for yourself so that you can see the full spectrum of the recommendations that are being made. The very first book that the blogger highlights, of course, is the first appearance of Deadpool, that being New Mutants issue number 98. The next book that the blogger talks about is actually the second appearance of Deadpool. This book doesn't get a whole lot of love, and we are specifically talking about X-Force issue number two. Now, when you contrast this book to the first appearance, what you'll see is that this second appearance has an FMV at a 9.8 of only $65. And in fact, a copy recently sold for as low as 40 bucks. And as I mentioned, there are several other books that the blogger talks about in this blog post that you may want to consider picking up, but I wanted to at least highlight for you the first and second appearances of this pretty awesome character. So as we transition from talking about Deadpool, we're now going to talk about Gwenpool. In this next blog post, our blogger does a solid job of highlighting a couple of low print run variants associated with Gwenpool. And he's doing this because he believes that Gwenpool has the potential to show up in an upcoming Hulu animated series associated with MODOK. Now, this series was originally announced back in February of 2019 and has not seen the light of day, but potentially could see the light of day now that the project has been moved over to Marvel Studios. And so while we don't know what's going to happen or whether Gwenpool will even show up or not, again, the blogger does a really good job of highlighting some inexpensive Gwenpool variants that you may want to check out. And so if you are a fan of Gwenpool or want to speculate on this character potentially appearing at some point in some show down the line, you definitely want to take a look at this blog post because in total, our blogger highlighted five different books that you may want to consider picking up. So there you have it. We have reached the end of another episode. If you enjoyed this episode, I want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button leave a comment behind, and tune in next week when we get to do this all over again.